there has been a project going on for quite a while to get Linux running fully natively on Apple's M1 hardware. And by natively, I don't mean mostly using Apple's proprietary code and then writing a couple of things to sort of just make it work. What I mean is running a fully open source driver stack and one major part of that is with the GPU. And the GPU side just hit a massive milestone. It can finally render triangles and not only triangles, shaded triangles. Now you may have seen a previous render and test by Alyssa Rosenzweig showing off this rabbit render here in GL Mark II. And this is certainly more visually impressive and is certainly a very important step along the way. But the difference here is a lot of the existing driver work has been done under macOS. The reason for this is because macOS actually has working drivers and it gives you a point of reference. Apple doesn't exactly post specifications for how their GPUs work and how they're supposed to perform on other platforms. So knowing what the end result is supposed to be is incredibly useful for that reverse engineering work. So while this is very important to the final product, this test back in May was running on top of the macOS kernel drivers. And what Alyssa was working on was basically the user space drivers. Now you might be saying, who really cares about a triangle? Why is a triangle so important? Well, what's different about this triangle render is this isn't being rendered in a macOS environment. This isn't using any of the macOS proprietary drivers. This is the first triangle rendered on a fully open source driver stack. And here's the thing about triangles. Triangles are the building blocks for far more complex renders. So if you can render one triangle, theoretically you should be able to render multiple and within a week of this happening we can already render 12 triangles now 12 is certainly a good next step but there's a lot more to do from there so the next step from there is remaking the rabbit render with close to 70,000 triangles i don't expect that to go as smoothly but it's certainly a step that needs to be taken now because this is still so basic there's not exactly tooling to automate the render so this render of 12 triangles and this render of one triangle both have hard-coded triangles this is perfectly fine and perfectly doable for 12 triangles not for 70,000 though. So what Lena is planning to do is basically run the render inside of macOS, then dump the Mesa command buffer, and then go from there with the fully open source driver stack. It's not going to work as smoothly because, you know, when you have 12 triangles, things like buffer overflows probably aren't an issue. But if you have any bugs in the drivers, 70,000 is probably going to show them. While this is certainly running on a fully open source driver stack and not running on macOS, this is currently not a Linux driver stack. That step still needs to be done. So right now this is running in the M1 N1 environment, which is the open source bootloader for running on M1 hardware. With that being said though, while I'm not a GPU driver expert, I would imagine the hard part of writing a GPU driver for completely undocumented hardware is getting it working on the completely undocumented hardware. And once you've got that step done, getting it working on something like Linux where there should be documentation available should be comparatively easy. Probably still a really difficult task, but much easier than the previous one. The end goal of this project is to eventually get all of the kernel side stuff merged into the main Linux kernel. So if you go and download something like Ubuntu or Arch or Fedora or PopOS or Debian or anything else out there, and you want to run it on the M1 Mac, it's just going to work. Right now, while things are still a work in progress, Work is being done under the Asahi Linux project, which does still have some basic graphics drivers, but they are running in software. Things like the basic frame buffer renderer and some OpenGL acceleration leveraging the LLVM pipe. It's not the best solution, but you'll still certainly get graphics. All of that being said, though, this is still the first step. All of the months and months of work has been leading up to this first step of what you could call like 0.001% of a modern GPU driver. It's nowhere near complete. It's exciting and it shows this entire project isn't just a massive waste of time, 
but it's still just the first step. It's still an incredibly long time until we get like modern OpenGL features, we get good performance, and maybe even more than just OpenGL drivers, maybe even Vulkan drivers, and much, much more. And sure, you can certainly say that this is never going to be to the level of if Apple made official drivers. And yeah, you're probably right there because Apple has documentation on how the hardware works and they know how their internal code works. They could probably port it over to Linux relatively easily. But that's never going to happen because Apple wants you to use macOS. So with that being the case then, even if this got to the level of the Novo drivers for NVIDIA, that would be way further than anybody ever thought was possible. I remember back when RC Linux first got announced, people were saying that this was just a massive waste of time. They're never going to work out GPU drivers. That's basically impossible. Now we're here. They're not perfect. They're not finished. But we have drivers. So now that we can do this and hopefully very soon render the rabbit, this does open up one very important question. How long until we have Doom running on these drivers? I would give it less than a year, to be completely honest. It's probably not going to run fast, but it'll be running very, very soon. If you heard about this announcement and you already had an M1 Mac or you're considering buying one secondhand, I would say wait a bit. At least wait for the drivers to be available on Linux and then get around to playing with it, unless you're a developer and want to go and help out the project. Because right now, the system isn't set up to be daily drivable. You can certainly get away with some things, but it's made for developers. Now, I want to give credit where credit is due. This project didn't just manifest out of nowhere, and the developers who worked really hard on this deserve more attention for it. So a lot of the initial work was done by Alyssa Rosenzweig. She's been working on this... God, I didn't know, like a year, year and a half, whenever the M1 Mac first came out, has been working really, really hard on this project, writing a lot of code, writing blog posts about the challenges with the project and things that they might be trying to do to actually get it working. And then the recent work being done by Asahi Lena. She's got a YouTube channel where she's been streaming a lot of this recent development. Literally, like... 80 hours of GPU hacking. That's a lot of time. Like, and not just in, you know, two or three hour blocks. Some streams that were over 10 hours long. With the shorter stream being six hours long. That's a lot of work and a lot of time being spent on this project. I have nothing but respect for someone with that level of focus for a project like this. And I'm sure there have been other people in the us here Linux team and random developers just passing on by who deserve credit for this work as well. All of you are way smarter than I am and deserve all the credit for it. And I'm sure some people are going to be salty and say, oh, how dare they waste their time on this project? This is never going to be usable at this rate. By the time it's usable, we're going to be on the M5. And sure, you may have some point about that, but... Just because it might be a waste of time for what you want to do in your life doesn't mean that for these developers, it's a waste of time for them. And let's just say that it never becomes viable on the M1 Mac. It's also not viable to run Gen 2 on a PS2 or random Linux distros on a Wii. But does that mean you shouldn't do it? No, because it's still cool nonetheless. I've said it before. I have no personal interest in getting an M1 Mac. If someone gave me one for free, maybe my opinion would change. But I prefer my easy to replace and easy to repair desktop system. And that's just it. But for those that do have M1 Macs or people who want to buy them on the secondhand market, this is a big step in the right direction. And at some point, you'll actually be able to daily drive Linux on one of these systems like you could with the older Macs. 
So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you have an M1 Mac or do you think this is a waste of time? What do you think about this whole reverse engineering project? I would love to know. So if you like this video, go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, certainly bear pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.